Good evening and welcome. You're watching Biz First Review 360. My name is Ravi Gamage. First, a look at tonight's headlines. Sri Lanka's poverty levels drop, but chronic revenue shortfall a challenge. Bigger ships boost volume at CICT. International hoteliers say Sri Lanka needs branded hotels. And also coming up in the program tonight, Nepal's Forbes list billionaire expands footprint in Sri Lanka. And few surprising things productive people do differently. And now for the stories in detail. The World Bank says Sri Lanka has made encouraging progress in reducing poverty, but future prosperity will depend on addressing chronic revenue shortfalls and fostering a more competitive and inclusive economy. Poverty in Sri Lanka has dropped below 7% of the population, but pockets of severe poverty remain in close proximity to urban areas, while higher rates can be seen in Monoragala and the North and East, a World Bank report said. According to the World Bank, poverty reduction can be linked to increased labour earnings as the economy shifted from less productive agriculture towards industry and services, more urbanisation and rising domestic demand. Excluding the North and East, the poverty headcount rate fell from about 22.7% in 2002 to 6.1% in 2012 and 2013. Despite recent progress, living standards remain low. The World Bank says around 40% of the population lives on less than twice the poverty line, which is 225 rupees per day. But against this backdrop of very encouraging progress, Sri Lanka faces very serious challenges. We see low living standards according to a variety of measures. There are pockets of very serious poverty in the country. And inequality has risen since 2009 in both income and consumption. Finally, social protection programs have been dwindling in terms of their impact, and they could be expanded and improved to both more directly support the poor to enable them to invest in the next generation. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe addressing the gathering said, Rural development programs aimed at alleviating poverty have resulted in a large level and subsidized farmers undermining markets. Are we just holding and giving money to the poor while the country's economy is growing and the rich are becoming richer and we are subsidizing the poor? We've got to break through. First is to get out of the South Asia mentality and look at the East Asian models. High rate of growth which requires manufacturing, IT, tourism, all to contribute. Then only will the rural economy also take off. Modernize the rural economy. Then what's the difference between the ordinary poor farmer and me? I have capital, he hasn't got capital. So how do we help him? Do we help him by giving him capital or do we help him by giving him subsidies? Sri Lanka's tax revenue to GDP ratio is one of the lowest in the world, reflecting a decline from 24.2% in 1978 to 10.7% in 2014. World Bank says low tax revenue has undercut the government's ability to invest in education, health and other sectors. Protectionist policies, low foreign direct investment, a bloated public sector and a dirt in skilled labour has also constrained the government in generating growth and in employment which is critical in lifting people out of poverty. The revenue base or tax collection base uh, not expanding rapidly, administrative delays in tax collection, then the various ad hoc uh, tax exemptions that have been given. Now the report in the, in the VAT system alone 200 to 500 exemptions have been given. So, uh, like that, a uh, number of factors have contributed to the erosion of revenue. And this erosion of revenue has taken place at the time there are pressing expenditure needs in this country. The World Bank says Sri Lanka's education system does not generate sufficient workers with quality and skills demanded by the economy. Among other things, the skill gap is seen as a constraint for growth and a barrier in finding better jobs for the bottom 40% of the population. Colombo International Container Terminals, or CICT, the only deep water container terminal in South Asia, has set a record handling 1.56 million TEUs last year, helping the port of Colombo 
consolidate as the region's main transshipment hub. Let's take a look at the performance of the CICT. CICT or Colombo International Container Terminals Limited, the only deep water terminal in South Asia, says growth in manufacturing and industrialization could help the port of Colombo attract more shipping lines and reduce the risk of only being in the business of transshipment. Transshipment accounts for more than 70% of total container throughput of Colombo. According to the Asian Development Bank, 70% of the volume in Colombo consists of transshipment cargo to and from India, East Africa and Bangladesh. An Indian port we call a gateway port because they have a lot of import export. Here we are a transshipment port. So the moment you have high volume of import export cargo, it changes the whole scenario. Then the shipping lines become a captive market for the port. The ships follow the cargo, so by natural default they have to be uh, all the port of Colombo. Now that is why we say we are more into transshipment business, which is about 78, 75, 78 percent of our business. It's a very volatile business because the cargo is not here; it is bought by a feed operator. Shipping lines can decide, okay, tomorrow I will ship the hub to port B. So that is the risk element of this business in being only in transit. So if the industrialization and manufacturing and production improves in Sri Lanka, it will put all of us on a good speaker. Colombo International Container Terminals more than doubled its container throughput in 2015, with some of the largest vessels afloat deployed on the Asia-Europe shipping lane calling at the terminal. Business-wise, we have managed to bring the port of Colombo into the limelight by having the first deep water facility in the whole of South Asia in operation and thereby also attracting the largest carriers to call Colombo. 2016 is predicted by all experts to be a tough year for the shipping and the boats industry but we are positively confident that we will hit at least a 10 percent growth overall in the port of Colombo. CICT is a joint venture between China Merchants Holdings International Company Limited and Sri Lanka Ports Authority. International hotel chains are eyeing Sri Lanka's booming tourism market. That's coming up right after this break. Welcome back. You're watching Biz First Review 360. Nepal's four bliss billionaire expands footprint in Sri Lanka. Lush tea gardens of Hatton welcome Zinc Journey Mandira, one of the newest colonial inspired boutique hotels to deck the hill country. The boutique hotel is part of CG Hotels and Resorts, an Asian hospitality chain owned by Nepal's only billionaire, Binod Chaudhary. CG Hotels and Resorts, in partnership with Ceylon Hotels Corporation, Sunshine Holdings, and Jetwin Hotels, plans to build 15 resorts in Sri Lanka across 13 destinations. It is our vision to create a unique brand identity for the Zinc journey and increase our footprint in Sri Lanka. CG Hotels and Resorts own 74 properties in 63 destinations including India, Nepal, China, Thailand, Malaysia and South Africa. Three other Ceylon Hotel Corporation rest houses rebranded as Zinc Journey Boutique Hotels are set to open in Sigiriya, Bambulla and Alla later this year. From our perspective, it's, it's very nice to have a partner uh, who believes in a vision to Sri Lanka which is uh, consistent with ours. We believe that um, there's a lot of room for the niche and the journey around Sri Lanka and the beauty of Sri Lanka to be enhanced. And uh, it's very encouraging to be with a partner who's already put money significantly uh, into Sri Lanka and has done so over a consistently long period of time. Uh, from the, as Kiran uh, mentioned, during the, the conflict, uh, post-conflict and continues to do so. The Tourism Promotion Bureau says around 76 hotels are set to open in the island this year, adding an estimated 5,855 rooms to the market. 
Tourist arrivals to the island rose 24.3% to 194,280 in January 2016 from a year earlier, with China closing on India at 26,083. Arrivals from India grew 26% to 28,895 in January 2016 from a year earlier, while arrivals from China, including Hong Kong and Macau, hit 26,083 with a growth of 122%. UK and Germany remain as traditional markets for Sri Lanka. And now a look at other stories on the show. The Inner Wheel District 322 of Sri Lanka held its annual Inner Wheel District Conference at Jetween Blue Nigambo. Inner Wheel is one of the largest international women's voluntary organizations dedicated to the service of humanity, especially women and children. Charlotte DeVos, president of the International Inner Wheel, was the chief guest. Inner Wheel is a unique global network of members who are working united in all the over the 104 countries with United Nations relations, serving human development in caring, caring the children, women, youth, fighting every kind of violence and fostering the peace education, saving the environment and the green planet through the sustainability in every area. The chairman of the District 322 Sri Lanka, Radha Sundarampillai, the national representative of District 322 Sri Lanka, John Jaimana, and conference chairman Dr. Anojana Jai Seelan attended the conference. Inner Wheel is active in more than 103 countries and has over 103,000 members. <laughs> Few hotels in Sri Lanka are able to capture their architectural legacy and colonial heritage as Mount Lavinia Hotel. Celebrating a momentous 210 years, the hotel announced its first bespoke event, named Words on the Mount, to be held in July this year. Continuing its literary tradition and maintaining its strong British connection, Mount Lavinia Hotel will host a very special celebratory event, Words on the Mount. The hotel has secured the great talent of four British writers, all who, of whom have a connection with Sri Lanka. It will be a literary feast over two days of readings and performances, covering a range of writing genres to whet the appetite for those desiring something new and exciting. Louis de Bonnet, the well-known international writer and winner of the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Best Novel in 1994, Captain Corelli's Mandolin, will introduce his new novel, The Dust That Falls from the Dreams, part of a trilogy set during the First World War. Thriller writer and award-winning television producer Peter Grimsdale and Stephanie Kalman are also expected to introduce their latest novels. In addition, we are also pleased to announce that the second edition of the book Mount Lavinia, The Governor's Palace will also be launched. Lanka Hospitals announced plans to launch a state-of-the-art diagnostics and treatment centre for women in April this year. The announcement was made at a workshop for breast cancer survivors and patients conducted by top consultants, clinicians, psychologists, therapists and sociologists. Lanka Hospital says cancer is on the increase and breast cancer is one of the most prevalent cancers in Sri Lanka. It is believed that 50% of cancer could be prevented through early detection and awareness on the availability of screening. I invite you to contact me at the Prime Minister's office as I am able to provide assistance through policy amendments, building awareness and government intervention needed for physical, psychological or socio-economic needs faced by breast cancer patients and survivors. The Women's Wellness Centre will have a wide range of screening packages. We also need to have 
Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight, but do join us again next Friday at the same time. I'm Ravi Gamage. Good night. <laughs>